Hello there, praise Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. Good evening and good morning, whichever time zone you are in. I'm very, very happy that uh, you're all having uh, made your time or available to listen through these sessions. And I'm also very thankful to God that he enables the same time in me and gives me that energy and health to be able to come and um, I'm not the I'm not preacher or teacher. Actually, I'm a student like you. <laughs> the preacher and teacher is our dear Holy Spirit, our helper, our beloved friend, right? All that I have done is like I have given my place to him, dedicating my time and dedicating my body, my thought, my conscience to him and said that come here, please take my place and you start to speak to my dear brothers and sisters. And uh, yeah, and we will all benefit from that. And yes, he is doing it. And this is what we call as ministry. <laughs> so never think ministry means some to some people. Oh, I have to do this. You have to do nothing. I have to do that. You have to do nothing. <laughs> all that you need to do is dedicate your life, dedicate your yeah, your your thoughts, your conscience, your desires your energy your skills your talent to god and uh, and god knows how to make use of it and you know take you to the next level all right uh, a warm welcome to this uh, series where we are uh, talking through the subject agape love of god right agape love of god uh, is something that we are doing it for the fourth episode which means it's it holds up utter importance and that's why we are not able to wind it up, right? Generally, we take it through few sessions, of course, convincingly, um, and then we leave it there. But this is the first, uh, or this is one of the several topics. Uh, there are a few topics where we had gone through multiple episodes. For example, evil spirits that deceive the mankind. We have done seven episodes, and I want to do another 13 or 14 episodes. Different types of evil spirits are being co covered, you know, that fight against the mankind and how we get into deception and how they kind of wage war against us and uh, how could we overcome them and so many things right and uh, that is why you know these kind of uh, teachings are very important uh, more from the practical perspective practical illustration and how can you live your life from the word of god and apply these doctrines and principles uh, to your lives and your habitual practices changes your lifestyle changes your Everything changes. Your thoughts changes. Your desires, they change. Isn't it? So that's why I'm telling you, always please uh, subscribe and watch out on the videos that we release. And those are going to be very, very important for you to go through. Uh, because every single video, we are meeting, meeting you with a different context, with a different subject. All needed for your life. All needed. All good for your life. All needed for your life to live on planet Earth. Is there anyone who can say that, oh, I don't want to live on Earth, let me go to Mars. Take a rocket and let me fly to Moon. You can't do that. You have to live on Earth. And the sad news is the ruler of the Earth is Mr. Devil. But the creator of the Earth is our dear Father. Right? Father in Heaven. And there is a conflict between these two. Father is Father of Truth. And Devil is Father of Lies. Father is father of light and devil is the father of darkness. Every sinful deed. He manufactures it. He invents it. Our father is the one who lives in holy deeds. And he is, his eyes are eyes of purity. And so, so is his attitude and nature and stature. He cannot withstand. He cannot tolerate something called as unholy deeds. Unholy things. He just cannot withstand. No way. And that's where... We get into this spiritual warfare. Understand this, right? That's why our life becomes difficult to live on earth. Because sin entered once and it's still sustaining. How about Jesus? Jesus came as second Adam to defeat the devil and sin. But not to abolish the sin. See, listen to this. Abolishing devil and sin happens in Revelation 20.10. Revelation 20.11 onwards. If you see white throne judgment, new heaven and earth comes. But until then, this earth, maybe I would say... Until the thousand years reign of Jerusalem, yeah, after the second coming and after the battle of Armageddon, after the great tribulation, all these events takes place. You want to know more about this? Jesus is coming soon. I've covered that all events there. The, the series is available. Please go, go through it, right? 
after all those events what happens is you get a peaceful time of 1000 years reign and then happens a fight and then the devil will be thrown permanently into the lake of fire white throne judgment happens people who are predestined to go to the lake of fire of course they are going to be thrown and people who are predestined to go to paradise predestined means oh god decides and no no you are deciding where you want to go about which i have covered in the series of judgment that's also available everything is available only thing you are not using your time to listen right <laughs> it's only for your benefit we do all this do i gain anything uh, somebody is going to gift me a rolls royce car because i am preaching all of this even if they would be presenting a rolls royce car i will gladly receive it sell the car and give the whole money to the poor <laughs> somebody has any idea of doing that come on contact me <laughs> i was just joking see i am no way interested on this materialistic dates no way no way and if i want anything my father will give and i need it from my father but anyone else gives it to me i will sell it and give it to the poor i will receive it i will give it to the poor jesus wherever he went he received arms and that's why his offering bag was full of money sorry treasure bag was full of money and he appointed an accountant his name was judas iscariot and he got carried away with the treasures not my jesus so jesus accepts offering but he gives it to the poor he doesn't take anything and secretly goes and have a you know hot biryani or a pizza or a you know chocolate ice cream or nothing like that you know very humble person a very nice person to uh, analyze and apply those principles to our lives coming back to the point yeah and in this life that we are living there is a spiritual warfare happening happening and until that time comes we have to live on earth but we got to live on earth and resist the devil enough yeah and be holy and stay on the side of god stay focused all these things are doesn't happen automatically right there is a mannerism there is a protocol there is a guideline there is a checklist you got to follow that simple and just keep sailing in the same pace in the same direction in the same uh, cons- in the with the same consistency in the same pace don't slow down of course the devil will possibly try to attack and increase his attacks and all that don't worry the heaven will deploy angels the more the attacks are increasing the more the guardian angels are increasing the more the grace multiplies the more the favor of god multiplies i can tell you this out of my personal experiences our god is faithful beloved i'm our god is faithful keep telling this in the midst of your situations where you are ill don't immediately say god heal me just say that give me the grace strength to bear and make a way to overcome and make a way for me to escape 1 corinthians 10 10:13 and revelation 3:21 and father i know that you are rewarder of faith and because you are faithful which we have read in philippians 1:6 and hebrews 11:6 you will help me to overcome and therefore i shall inherit your throne can you believe even at the corner of your mind that god the father listens to such prayers and he will say ha let me think about it no god is heaven will react heaven will be thrilled to come and help us sometimes we need to revisit our prayers the methods of prayers we are actually going to release a book about the importance of prayer and how to pray and all that we are teaching there it's available in the audio series but we are releasing a book because i felt in my heart that we need to really really help people to teach them the basic mannerism the methods the protocol the guidelines to pray they don't even know all right now let me not deviate now as an event of that where we are boiling down is towards the agape love of god that makes god to provision us or his providential hands will provide us it's called the jehovah jireh right god a provide jehovah jireh god my pro- god wait wait jehovah jireh my provider your grace is sufficient for me for me for me jehovah jireh my provider your grace is sufficient for me my lord has supplied all my needs according to his riches and glory He shall give his angels charge over me Jehovah Jireh cares for me for me for me Jehovah Jireh cares for me My Lord Jesus cares for me for me for me my Lord Jesus cares for me I went to the you know the highest uh, threshold of the scale <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry for my tone and I was not prepared to sing anyway I'm not a great singer but I know a little bit of singing that's all try singing such songs in the midst of your difficulties yeah 
and you will know who your god is and you know how big is his love and his love will come and empowers you it surrounds you it flourishes you with favor grace mercy compassion of god comes and overwhelms in your life yeah, i'm not teaching some magical doctrine here yeah you make an effort you will taste all these goodness of god you make zero efforts and sorry bad news is you will you will see the wiles you will taste the wiles of the devil and obviously you will end end up in depression you will be in deprived state you will be you will feel that you are rejected by god rejected by god none of this is true you don't have to live your life this way it is you who will decide how you want to ordain your life before god how you want to predestine your life before god that's why i told you those that were predestined to go to paradise who is deciding you all authority and free will is given in your hands and my hands okay as an event of that we are in episode number 4 and we are dealing through this love and marriage and connecting it with agape love of god one side talking from god's perspective what love means and the other side we are talking from the mankind's perspective how we could execute or how we could implement accomplish the same standards of agape love from god uh, how how is that we could you know instill that uh, those in the midst of our life day in and day out in the midst of relationships our previous episode was we dealt with relationships and now we are dealing specifically about love and marriage so we spoke from uh, the book of ephesians 5 in our previous session now we will continue from colossians 3 18 uh onwards right i would want to talk little bit about the christian home and then we will call it a discussion right sorry i took little time to recap because recap is recapping about our series is important especially first few sessions you know people like a wake up call <laughs> people forget you know what did we discuss in previous episode yeah this is what we discussed and now we are in episode 4 the christian home how should a christian home look like yeah with eight pillars and one roof and four walls every house will be like that only right <laughs> christian homes are no different they also they're not looking at the externals of the architecture you know you can build your home differently beautifully nicely very 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 well done i am and you have your own property right please have your own property pray pray to god do not always live in rented facility i am a strong believer in materialistic prosperity too Yeah, as much as I emphasize on the spiritual deeds, I am someone who will al- who also always emphasize that hey, if you are in poverty uh, line, uh, uh, sorry, if you are in st- not poverty line, poverty stricken, that's a, that's a curse from the devil. And Bible asks us to overcome. And Bible is saying that you know the grace of God is sufficient enough to uh, you know help us to come out of that poverty. Yeah. now let's come to the point the christian home is not about the externals the car that is parked outside your uh, home or or inside your home or the color of your building or whatever it's not about that home but here the christian home is talking about your own life your own body your own relationship with your wife relationship with your children relationship with your husband relationship with your in-laws relationship with your blood relations whoever visits your life visits your home relationship with people who come and visit right it it all it all starts from husband and wife uh, and then it boils down to other relationships but the biggest deciding factor would be how is your relationship as a couple with god yes the temple of god is our body bible says and as husband and wife you are no more to be called as two bodies you are united as one flesh one spirit one mind before marriage yes the situation was different you lived in a different place you belong to a different family yes so the wife belongs to a different family and yes you are ab- abiding by that culture you are abiding by this culture fine now you both are united and that's why we read from the book of ephesians 5 right um maybe i'll read that verse for you for this reason you shall walk out of your home and say that father and mother don't talk to us anymore <laughs> not like that right for this reason the man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh 
so sometimes it is not to be taken in literal tense that you have to walk out of your home and be shifted yes i would say that's the best method to build that fellowship between husband and wife without any interventions right but then you can also still do that within the same home but you are building a new home that's called as a christian home that's called as home of fellowship that's called as home in oneness that's called as home in uni un unimosity that's called as home in passion for each other forgiving one another right being compassionate to each other helping each other loving each other empathizing each other you know so many things are involved in that christian home which you are newly building after your marriage and this is exactly what paul is always trying to say even in the book of 1 corinthians uh, chapter 7 you know how it is important to be uh, unified as a couple um, and how much it is important to build that home because it starts from you and once you beget children right you become uh, your family gets extended and their children grandchildren right that family gets extended but who had sown the seed it is you both yeah it's not enough if the if husband alone sows the seed and what is the plant and all that how about the wife sitting and watching watching it's fine but she plucks up the, that plant what is that called as being rude arrogant fighting disagreeing disputes no settling down the matters all these things what it means one person sows the seed what is the plant when the plant is about to grow the other person plucks it off that's called as you know breaking the fellowship and that's the that's the act of the devil devil is a destroyer right he would like to destroy your home so the christian home is not about the externals but it's more involved about the internals right what is the condition what is your or spiritual status you want to know more about it take and read 1 john chapter 2 fully and take and read ephesians 5 complete chapter fully and take and read romans 12 verses 12 to 22 fully how must a christian behavior should be how must how must a christian behave and take and read 1 corinthians 6 uh, 1 to 11 how what should be the mark of a christian and take and read if you are a new born again believer in christ what should be the character of the new man in colossians uh, 3 verses 12 to 17 just before uh, this uh, paraphrase what we are meditating now you understand each one of you should uh, follow these standards and stick to this protocol see nothing comes for free no pain no gain that is the proverb right likewise you don't have to go through pain to learn all of this it's a pleasure right it's a, it's just going to help you to get get to the better side today i'll tell you the biggest enemy to every human being is to fight depressions and you know how they get in there all these things accumulates yeah the dejections the rejections the quarrels the uh, the disputes uh, the 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 bitterness the envy the grudges the complaining attitude uh, the gossiping attitude murmuring attitude and uh, no, never be happy with what you have that attitude unforgiving spirit all these accumulates over a period of time what do you know there is too much of garbage which leads you to depression then you will be run between running sorry running between psychiatrist office and counseling office and this and that so you really need to get there are you a christian how can a christian end up in such a uh, state right in fact you should be helping the other folks belonging to different religion and all that i'm i'm dying to see that time where you know people of the world will start to look for christians hey please help us and today it's other way around christians are running around <laughs> to seek for help very sad my heart bleeds when i look at that such a kind of situation you know nobody uh, are just hearers they are not doers nobody is ready to practice these uh, doctrines what a sad situation of life hmm? so the christian home is not about the externals it's about the internals how much you have this christ like mindset spirit of humility now let's get into the session right colossians 3:18 wives submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the lord again it also belongs to husbands husbands also should be submissive and humble it's not like you know uh, see you both have to agree right i'm telling you there is no discrimination husband is greater than wife wife is greater than uh, greater than husband nothing like that you're all equal before god but then husband should always hold that prominence you should have that prominence means what account not about dominance 
prominence means accountability responsibility doing things very diligently carefully leading others guiding others especially your wife hmm? that's what it means as it is fitting in the lord if you violate this standard hmm? if you violate this principle if you violate this protocol mannerism the way the mannerism to lead your life as husband and wife then you are not fitting in the lord how much ever you may go and attend the charismatic prayers and sunday sessions and this and that when you don't have that kind of submittance submittance means not surrenderance and all submittance means what you know you're walking in agreement you will have lot of disagreements in life who is asking you not to argue maybe you can have a gentle fight but it's fine settle down the matter there before the sun sets come to a common ground arrive at a common ground sometimes you know husbands listening to me you may have to compromise it may not be at the best of your interest but your wife loves it and you need to understand right probably she wants to have cup of coffee in a specific shop and you hate coffees learn to love coffees for the sake of your wife because why you love your you love your wife as yourself right so what your wife is interested you will slowly start to uh, so don't have coffee and throw up on on her face you know <laughs> you you could always tell her you know honey i don't like coffee but i will accompany you how about me taking another drink uh, in the same place see it's about uh, that see this that's a mannerism right you are respecting what she wants but at the same time you are also very much interested to you know convince her for the reason that you respect her for the reason that you are interested in having fellowship with her when you have that attitude i'll tell you what everything will fall in place you will never give up on that relationship but you will you will, you may not do that with your colleague or with your boss or all that you may gently say that you know i don't like it please um, yeah I, i'm not interested but you won't say that the same thing to your wife that's called a submittance i'm telling you right you walk in relationship you walk in agreement you walk as one body but you will say that in a different manner i'm not interested I, you won't say like that you know i don't like coffee but i would like to accompany you i see that you are very much fond of coffee let's do that i'm just taking a you know vague example but there are bigger matters in life bigger bigger decisions that you may want you want to buy a property you know she's interested in flat then you may have to arrive at a comma you want to buy this car yeah fine you both settle down then i don't want this color <laughs> how do you settle down tell me you can close your eyes and open the door because i hate this color <laughs> there are very de- there are lots of decisions from the toughest to the easiest but all are decisions right and so one of you will have to give up one of you will have to compromise one of you will have to change your interest one of you will have to be a little sober because why hey this is a passing world man this is a passing life your car is not going to be with you for 100 years and you yourself will not be 100 years you know if you cross 70 80 it's a great thing in the current world that's it you're going to be roughly married you know generally men get married between 25 to 30 and ladies gets ma- get married between 23 to 25 uh, according to a study and uh, after that you live together for 40 years that's it and the first 20 years is when you f- go for all this kind of because full of energy you know until you are 50 55 until your first child gets married and after that what that's it uh, the next generation is born <laughs> you will receive your grandchildren and then finished for the 20 25 years you are going to get into so much of argument don't you think you deserve to just lower your standard and so okay and wife will understand she is looking at you no know? every time is giving up it's not fair and she will also practice the same thing and you know what a kind and compassionate couple you become to each other husbands love your wives and do not be bitter towards them barking like a dog where are you where is my coffee this is how <laughs> this is how the husband enters into his home because why the whole day he was tortured by his boss all the anger he pours on that poor lady and likewise you know uh, Uh, the the wife is having fight with her mother in law and the moment he comes in she will pounce on the husband do you know what your mother did to me this is why i told you go by ephesians 5 you know for this reason you shall leave your father and mother husband please make the decision yeah 
and you can visit them frequently if required daily but then your home is different sorry according to the will of god and this was told even in genesis chapter 3 man huh? it's not written some uh, sometime in the recent past at the beginning of the world in the in the beginning of the world sorry at the, as early as the world began god wrote this and you know what why he wrote this because god himself is ready to stay he is their father and mother right he is the one who created he is ready that's why he comes in the cool of the day to have fellowship the rest of the time he leaves them he he ensures that they have privacy in their matters that's why although god was aware that what eve was doing with mr devil and what adam was doing you know being a sluggish guy not bothering about his wife he never interfered why because privacy privacy it's their life if god is able to behave like that who are you my dear beloved brothers and sisters yeah please don't intrude uh, don't don't in- interfere in your children's life but then if they come for guidance please help them but if you see something is wrong why don't you gently pass that advice and leave it there pray about it right do not have that bitterness and find the reasons for the bitterness one of the reasons i'm uh, the, i'm telling you you know a couple of reasons i told you as examples we don't investigate we don't eval sorry not about evaluating we don't investigate we don't introspect enough and that's the reason we end up in conflicts and conflicts builds up the bitterness or bitterness builds up conflicts either way it's proportional to each other if we got to have this introspection done at regular intervals and therefore you don't end up breaking that love and relationship how many of you are with me hmm? unplug the bitterness bitter envy is from the devil it's demonic wisdom according to james chapter 3 verses 13 onwards you read and see you will understand and it kills relationship it ends the relationships yeah it builds strife it builds envy grudge yeah bitterness builds all these things it cannot happen with anyone right not only between husbands and wife you just cannot have that character if you are filled with heavenly wisdom your attitude will be gentle your attitude will be full of kindness tolerance patience fruit of the spirit galatians 5:22 and 23 children obey your parents in all things for this is well pleasing to the lord i know that we are talking about love and marriage now where is children coming here i'm telling you it's your responsibility to build this attitude in your child they are closely monitoring you they are closely looking at you right how you are behaving are you walking by the word of god are you practicing what you are preaching is what they will be looking for all the time and you are not living as an example role model in conduct and speech according to 1 timothy 4:12 they are not going to listen to you why should they listen or they will pretend as if they are listening but they would not practice it and you are the reason for their soul to burn in the lake of fire you know they end up as criminals they end up as you know someone who is mischievous and then you cannot simply command them children you should obey me see word is written and they will say that do not provoke your child to anger it is written in ephesians 5 <laughs> children are very smart you know and they are they are nothing but the kingdom of heaven they will also talk to you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath but bring them up in the training and admonition of the lord So Ephesians six and verse number four, they know how to quote verse back to you. So don't talk about these verses, but bring it to practice. How through your lifestyle first, as husbands and as husbands and wives, how you people are loving each other and behaving. The children will observe that, and naturally they are going to fall in the circle of obedience. You don't have to make any effort. Seriously, I'm telling you this, right? When you know how to conduct, when you know how to. be very very gentle in your speech and pure in your character and behavior they know how to be obedient you don't have to teach it comes naturally spontaneous reaction fathers do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged see for the second time paul is writing it i read it from ephesians 6:4 now colossians 3:21 fathers fathers means mothers also do not keep kindling kindling telling the same thing 20 times tell it once and leave it there Yeah, once for a day is enough i think right the moment the child enters you know look at the color of your shoes where did you go <laughs> where did they go they went to school and they play in mud so what that's why you are sending them to school no do not provoke them 
waiting for opportunities see did i not tell you or how many times should i tell you <laughs> if god were to come and ask the same how many times should i give you chances huh? today i'm ending it up go go to hell would you be happy enough this is exactly the question that all the parents should be asking to themselves yeah do not be only the preachers and teachers but be the doers of the world sorry the word of god and uh, if paul is writing this for the second time as a letter to colossae uh, you know people at colossae that that mean, that means it's very important you know do not provoke do not irritate them do not tease them do not mock at them do not call them inappropriate names and you know what is a you know what a big source of discouragement it is for the child because they look up to you for everything you are the source of encouragement you are the source of motivation you are the source of hope and you as husbands and wife you don't live according to the word of god you become such a spoiled sport spoil your children's life you know ultimately you are ending up there servants obey in all things your masters according to the five will skip that because it's inappropriate right and uh, for for this context and whatever you do do it heartily as to the lord and not to men verse number 23 important and this is the key for your success this is the thing which builds the christian home so beautifully well home means you understand now right it's not about external it's not about the brick and stone but it's about your heart it's about your attitude it's about your a behavioral pattern it's about your mannerism do it heartily heartily means what in in commit in commitment and abiding in the laws and commandments blessed are you bible says revelation 20 to 14 if you have such an attitude blessed are the person uh, or the people who meditate in my word day and night uh, bible says all of you are with me huh? what psalm chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 you read Hardly knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You will receive the reward on that white throne judgment day for all that you have lived your life as how Jesus receives the reward. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Father in heaven tells. Yeah, how he was able to receive the reward because he lived his life in commitment, and he lived heartily. He practiced the word heartily. He never cribbed about it. but he who does wrong will be repaid for the wrong which he has done and there is no partiality with god with that i close repaying by god means what you know you don't follow the word of god definitely your children also won't follow the word of god and god will really dislocate i mean to say he will move out of your house we cannot live there because it's not christian home because you are always embracing the principles of the demons bunch of unclean spirits always ready to get inside your home when you don't practice the word of god when you don't live according to the word of god and then how can you call your home as a christian home just because one cross is hanging on the left side and jesus photograph is hanging on the right hand side and some the scriptures or that that cardboard is hanging on some other walls so is that the indication or identity for a christian home no <laughs> no your love and marriage is is one identity the behavior as a christian couple is another identity and how your children see looking at your children's behavior right looking at your child's behavior looking at your son's behavior looking at your daughter's behavior anyone should be able to tell that whether it's a christian home or not because why they inherit what you practice the kind of words they talk the language they use yeah their reactions yeah and the life right they deal it with, with uh, is there any kind of uh, praying moments or is it all about uh, video games this and that gadgets all right i think that's good enough see so you see where we start right from both of you and it boils down and it impacts everyone is it a positive impact or is it going to be a negative impact that decision is kept given in your hands yeah it's a free will you have every right to have that free will and god is not someone who will intrude you know he made that decision long ago at the beginning of, in the beginning of the world itself he decided in genesis chapter 2 you uh, take and read that's why i read through that law and commandment right he never intrudes he never enforces he never 
disturbs your privacy. He gives you the free will. But do the right thing. That's why you have the beautiful Bible in your hand. But full of laws and commandments, doctrines, guidelines. If that is not enough, ask the Holy Spirit. He will beautifully explain it to you. Pray about it in the name of Jesus. And God the Father is going to respond to you. You don't lack anything. You, you, you lack nothing, right? You, 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 you lack nothing as far as guidance is concerned. God is available all the time. All right. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity. We appreciate your mercies. We appreciate your grace. There isn't anyone like you in this entire earth. And uh, at the same time, Lord, we want to take everything to our heart and apply these principles that you're teaching us. Help us to be more serious about your about our Christian life and about your words, about your precepts, about your laws and doctrines. Help us to be more serious and help us to walk abiding in those laws and commandments. In Jesus' name we pray. Subscribe to our channel. Get access to all our playlists. Please don't miss on any videos. The only reason we ask you to subscribe. And at the same time, share it with your friends, relatives, near ones, dear ones, whoever it may be. Please um, help them also to walk in light. Continue to remember me and our ministries in your personal prayers. I need it for sure. And you are my praying partner. And that's what keeps me going. Thank you. God bless you.